Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy and we are in class with Ruth in uh, Lessons on Lasting Relationships. In this session we'll be looking at Ruth chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 facing hidden dangers. Over the next few sessions we'll, we will look at some relationship issues. And an old book about a love story will be our Bible text. We're going to look at Ruth chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 and discover some hidden dangers that must be corrected. Ruth chapter 1 beginning with verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the land of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Malon and Chilion also died, and the, so the, women, the woman survived her two sons and her husband. As was in Bible times, the home is pressured on all sides. Let's take a look at three pressures that work to harm relationships. First, there are pressures that come from cultural sources. Look at the first part of verse 1 again. In the days when the judges ruled. Judges 21 and verse 25 speaks loudly of those days. It says, in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Kind of like today, isn't it? Moral relativism, out-of-control immorality, destructive individualism, unrestrained self-expression, and very inconsistent role models. Their message of morality was pretty simple. Tolerate everything except intolerance. So there are pressures that come <clears throat> from cultural sources. Second, there are pressures that come from natural forces. Look at the second part of that first verse. There was a famine in the land. Many of the pressures that affect our lives and homes have nothing to do with morality. Some things just happen. There are things that occur simply because we live in a fallen world, a sinful world. They just come with the territory of living life. And they have two characteristics that are easily recognized. First, they occur indiscriminately. No one is immune to problems, including believers. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45 reads, your Father in heaven makes his sun rise on the evil and on the just and sends rain on the just and the unjust. They're beyond our control. The man in, in our text is a man named Elimelech who married a young lady named Naomi. They had two children on the surface they appeared to be a typical functional family. But things are not always as they seem. When the first one was born, he was named Malon, which means sickly. 
And the, the second was named Chilion, which means wasting away. Why were sick children born to a nice couple? Why did famines come? Why do any natural disasters occur? Why do some face long-term illnesses? Why do hard workers lose their jobs? Why do financial issues happen? Apart from times when God revealed he sent or allowed adversity for purpose, well, we don't know. We need to be careful not to judge anyone regarding things we don't know. Many circumstances happen simply because we live in a sin-cursed world. So there are pressures that come from natural forces. And then third, there are pressures that come from personal choices. Look at the third part of that first verse. Went to dwell in the country of Moab. Elimelech had four mouths to feed during a time of famine. It would seem that the responsible thing to do is to find food and employment anywhere you can. But what if doing so means you have to compromise your faith? For Elimelech to leave his inheritance in the promised land and go to Moab was equal to backsliding in those days. This one decision had a bigger impact on his family than all the outside influences combined. Notice the full consequence of this one personal decision. He disobeyed the Lord. Second part of verse, verse 2. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And then um, the second part of verse 4. And they dwelled there about 10 years. Have you ever thought about the negative impact of your actions in the eyes of your children? Elimelech went there in disobedience to feed his family. His children married in disobedience and stayed there. So he disobeyed the Lord. He also devalued the spiritual heritage of his forefathers. The land Elimelech owned was more than just the family farm. It was a special inheritance which God gave to his forefathers. He didn't see that the land was a faith inheritance with spiritual significance. He gave his children a message of materialism. Money's more important than spiritual integri integrity. And he also delivered a serious consequence to his descendants. Look at Judges chapter 2. Verses 2 and 3. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them up before you, but they shall be thorns in your side, and their God shall be a snare to you. One consequence of his disobedience was the threat of thorns and snares from the pagan culture. The wives of Malon and Chilion would bring unbiblical views of God and morality into their marriages. Look at verse 4. They took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. And then Elimelech determined the future struggle of his family. Verse 3, then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two children. Verse 5, then both Malon and Chilion also died, so the woman survived her two, ch her two sons and her husband. While well-intended, moving to feed his family, he didn't solve the problems. Because after his death, they were left to struggle on their own 
without the help of close relatives. Instead of blaming others for the problems we face, we should re-examine the choices we've made and consider their true impact on our families. Behind the choices of Elimelech is a premise that has taken a serious toll on today's families. And what is that premise? You can't leave God out of the home and still have it all. This applies in, in, in several ways and to various degrees. First, a total disregard for God. We're getting along fine without God. In fact, some people are convinced their home is better off with God out of their lives. Second, a limited commitment to God. We have faith, but don't practice it. Elimelech was one of these. He believed he was a citizen of God's heavenly city, but he chose to live out in the suburbs of sin. So many Christians have commitments they make more important than their relationship with God. Some of those commitments might be good things, but do they pull you away from the Lord? Third, a compartmentalized God. They go to church, but leave church at church. They don't bring their faith into their homes. They don't want to sound too religious or churchy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, speak strongly against that idea. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, And these words which I command to you today shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your home house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. We, listen, are called to pass on our faith. Hidden in Elimelech's story are two promises that will bless a home. First, a promise regarding the Lord. He waits for our return. When we leave God for Moab, he waits for us where we left him. Kind of like the father of the prodigal son, God doesn't move. After we experience the futility of living without God, he's waiting for us to realize that if necessary, it is better to have less with God than to have more without him. And second, a promise regarding your inheritance. You cannot lose it. When you leave fellowship with God for attractive but ultimately empty promises, you may seem full, but it won't be fulfillment. Elimelech thought that moving to Moab would solve his problems, but it simply created new ones. Let me give you one final thought in this regard. You may choose to leave the fellowship of inheritance with God, but you can't lose it. Of course, you won't find it, everything as it was. If Elimelech had returned to his inheritance, he would have had to pull the weeds from the field, fix the fences that had fallen, repair the roof that was leaking, but in time, it could be restored. When Abraham and Lot chose to separate, Abraham decided to live on the Judean hillside and Lot moved into the cities of the plains of, so of Sodom, the plains of Sodom. Lot believed the same false premise that Elimelech did. In the end, Lot lost his family spirituality. Abraham, despite his personal failures, became the father of the Israelites. You have a great day.